As the number of coronavirus cases surges in Whitman County, Pullman police are now writing tickets for people violating COVID mandates. We saw cooler temperatures today. Some of you may even have seen a few rain showers, but I'm tracking hot and dry weather right through Labor Day weekend. But first, Spokane County deputies are investigating a deadly shooting near the Dishman Hills area. We'll tell you what we know so far. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Regina is off tonight. We start with some breaking news. Spokane County deputies investigating a deadly shooting in the southeast part of the county. Krem 2's Casey Decker was on the scene tonight and brings us what we know so far. This is a relatively rural section of Spokane County, just a few blocks southwest of the city of Spokane Valley. Here's what we know happened. Deputies say earlier this evening, two men were arguing. Then at some point, one man shot the other. That man later died. According to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office, transcripts suggest the shooter called 911. One man is being detained as major crimes investigates. No word yet on whether he's actually been arrested and charged. Some witnesses on scene were also held for questioning. A section of an all dirt part of Park Road was closed off for a few hours. It's now mostly open to traffic, though police vehicles are still here. Now, this death investigation in the county comes as close attention is being paid to homicides over in the city of Spokane. 13 confirmed already in 2020, 11 solved according to city police. That's nearly double the number there were last year. The most ever in one year for Spokane was 2002, which saw 24 murders. Now, of course, this shooting has not yet been ruled a homicide, and even if it was, it's in the county, not the city, so wouldn't count towards those stats. And like I mentioned, major crimes for the county on scene here, setting up a command post. They're still investigating. We'll keep you up to date on what we hear from them. In Spokane County, Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. Firefighters working to contain a growing wildfire near Orofino. Idaho's Department of Land says it's already destroyed two homes and is threatening several more. At last check, the Whitetail Loop fire is about 500 acres in size. Multiple engines and air support are fighting the fire. The Clearwater County Sheriff's Office is evacuating some areas. And for more information on those evacuations, you can call the Sheriff's Office at that number right there at the bottom of your screen, 208-476-4521. All right, with that, we want to switch gears and talk about weather with meteorologist Michelle Boss. Michelle, anytime we're talking about wildfires in the area, obviously the forecast is hugely important. So our firefighters are going to be helped out by the weather in the coming days. Now, our fire danger, I would say, is relatively high this week, and it's for a couple of reasons. Now, we did see some cooler temperatures and a couple of raindrops this morning, but uh, that really didn't amount to much, and we're not looking at any rain in the forecast at all. We're looking at rising temperatures with those rising temperatures, decreased relative humidity, and some occasionally windy conditions. Fortunately, we're not looking at really strong winds anytime this week at this point. But again, uh, we just haven't seen a lot of rain this August, only two hundredths of an inch. And that was back on August 6th. This morning we saw a trace. That means less than a hundredth of an inch of rain. And that was uh, similar conditions in Coeur d'Alene, Deer Park, and across the Palouse. A little bit of rain fell, but not much. It was cool today with a high of 73. We will say goodbye to the cooler temperatures starting tomorrow. We have clear skies tonight. Just a little ground clutter showing up there. We will see plenty of sunshine tomorrow. So temperatures are going to be going up rapidly after bottoming out tomorrow morning in the lower to mid 50s. We should be back up into the middle 80s on Tuesday. 10 degrees warmer than today. 80 on Wednesday and more sunshine on Thursday with highs again in the upper 80s. All right, Michelle, we'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. Thank you. Here at Krem, we are committed to bringing you the latest back to school information. The Long Range Planning Committee for the Coeur d'Alene School District had a virtual meeting discussing the latest back to school plan. So here are a few takeaways from that meeting. There will be multiple options for child care, including child care options for teachers who need to go into buildings. There will also be pre ordered meals available to all students for free. For phases of reopening, there will be a week's notice when shifting into a different phase. They hope to live, so to speak, in each category for at least four weeks, so it's not strenuous on students and staff. Also, according to Superintendent Steve Cook, enrollment is down by 800 students, and they attribute that to the ongoing pandemic. In the meantime, this week, Spokane Public Schools will be sending out student schedules. SPS says teachers in the district have cumulatively taken 9,000 classes on technology training to prepare for the transition to online learning. Meantime, a family webinar focusing on kindergarten is happening on the 3rd. That's set to start at 6.30 p.m. And for the latest updates on all the school-related webinars, just text the word meeting to 509-448-2000 and we'll send that information directly to your phone.
The Spokane County Prosecutor's Office determined that a Kalispell Tribal Police Officer was justified in shooting a man believed to have stolen from Northern Quest Casino back on June 22nd. Kalispell Tribal Officer Dan Dice shot Zachary Craig while trying to contact Craig, who's accused of cashing out slot machines that people had left money in. Now the incident escalated when investigators say Craig tried to run over multiple officers with his car. After Officer Dice asked Craig to stop several times, prosecutors say he raised his weapon and fired a single round at Craig. No charges will be fired against, filed rather, against Officer Dice. All right, still ahead tonight, the New York Times ranks Pullman as the sixth highest metro area city for fastest growing coronavirus numbers in the country. Coming up, we'll break down that data and what the police department is doing to enforce coronavirus restrictions. Coming up next.